Like many developing countries around the world, Uganda is highly reliant on traditional agricultural practices for both food and job security. With a rapidly increasing population, many of whom are well below the poverty line, increasing food production and public health are a growing concern in many areas of the country. Unlike many African nations, however, Uganda is fortunate to have reliable rainfall and fertile soils, which provide suitable growing conditions for many of the country's staple foods, including the banana. Uganda is second only to India in banana production, with 75% of all farmers growing the staple crop. With this reliance on the banana, it is no wonder that many Ugandans are skeptical of the newly developed golden banana. Bananas have been produced using non-genetically engineered inputs in Uganda up until recently when the golden banana was introduced. The golden banana was created by genetically modifying the dominant Cavendish dessert banana with the highly enhanced levels of provitamin A found in fey bananas of Micronesia and Papua New Guinea. Studies have been successful in creating multiple GM banana lines and discovered that the highest levels of provitamin A were observed in fruit with the longest maturity. The target for the golden bananas was set at providing 50% of the estimated average requirement of vitamin A in vulnerable populations, specifically focusing on children under 60 months and lactating mothers. Also, the bioconversion ratios of beta carotene equivalents to vitamin A were considered for both cooked and steamed bananas, since that is how bananas are commonly prepared in Uganda. While genetically modified bananas seem familiar to Americans, that is not the case in African countries. Countries like Uganda did not have the technology to produce genetically modified produce in the past, so they produced organic food instead. The effort to introduce a genetically modified banana to growers in Uganda has sparked controversy. The Ugandan parliament passed the Biotechnology and Biosafety Bill, which allowed for the production of GMO crops in Uganda. Not only are residents torn over who supports the bill and those who do not support it, the Ugandan president, Yori Museveni, refused to sign the bill after Parliament passed it. He believes that GMO crops could contaminate already developed organic crops. The issue has torn Ugandan farmers and Parliament apart and forced them to pick sides on this issue. Both sides began fighting for why they supported or opposed the new law. Some that oppose believe it is a scheme performed by developed countries who provided the GMO technology. Competing against some of the most developed countries in the world with technology they provide is a recipe for disaster. Plus, trying to trade genetically modified bananas to surrounding countries that don't support GMOs in the first place will be impossible. Some members of parliament wondered if Ugandan farmers would have the income to purchase GMO seeds in the first place if their farm was already struggling to provide for them. On the other hand, many scientists celebrated the passing of the bill. This helped researchers bring their work into use and expand their research efforts beyond the laboratory into the field. Some scientists claim that technology like this is necessary for any country to prosper. The issue tore Parliament and the public apart while forcing them to choose sides on an issue that tested the traditions of Uganda. In terms of stakeholders, there will always be a controversy between those who are opposed and those who are in favor of the golden bananas. The scientists who developed them, along with some farmers and the members of parliament, believe that these bananas are necessary for the health and nutrient requirements of the Ugandan public, while the community, the other portion of the farmers, and for a while the Ugandan president, believed that these genetically modified organisms, like the golden bananas, would disturb the local seeds being grown in that area especially the non-genetically engineered bananas that could potentially be lost forever. This is their main concern in conjunction with the possibility of the inability for the farmers to afford the new genetically modified seeds. Sustainability of the banana food system depends on environmental health, economic profitability, and social equity. Currently, Ugandan banana farmers are struggling with all three of these aspects. Environmentally, Native banana varieties require more inputs such as water, fertilizer, and pesticides because they are more susceptible to local stressors like pathogens and drought. While GE bananas can mitigate these losses, there is an economic concern that the majority of Uganda's importers only accept organic produce, so the golden banana would be excluded from those markets. Social sustainability is arguably the largest factor in that local growers have a strong sense of pride in their family varieties and as a culture, Uganda is generally adverse to GE technology. Altering the genetics of the banana is a threat to their personal form of sustenance, livelihood, and cultural identity. 
While the crop is predicted to be on the market in 2021, the future of the golden banana in Uganda hangs on the process of communication between scientists and all Ugandans throughout the banana food system. It is likely that as the pressures of malnutrition and crop disease increase, GE bananas will become a more accepted option of production, at which point they could greatly enhance sustainable agriculture in Uganda.